Hey, good morning guys. So I got, we got two problems today. So this is problem number two. I just wrote it up so you guys didn't have to watch me write it. Uh, this is problem number two. This is problem number one. We're going to deal with the intermediate value theorem. Uh, worksheet seven is just writing limits like we did yesterday in the opener and finding limits. So if you have trouble with that, come to office hours. Uh, but I wanted to tackle the intermediate value theorem. Someone came on yesterday and said, I, I, I know all the worksheet stuff, but I really had trouble with the uh, AP Classroom piece. That's because of the language, and we haven't gotten too much of the language yet, so we're getting ready to start. So I figured I'd give you guys two problems here that talk about how everything kind of ties together. And then well, that's what we're going to do the next couple of days on the videos. I want you guys, I'm going to work with you guys on, on the ideas of how all this stuff kind of pulls together. So. Let's consider the function s of x equals 2x squared plus 4x. There must be some value of a, that's a variable of a, let me put like little quotations so you guys can see it, of the value a between 0 and 1 for which s of a equals 3. So why or why not? <clears throat> Let's just draw this real quick. So we have a graph. Always draw a graph like this. So we have a graph that says we have the function 2x squared plus 4x. If I plug in 0, so if I do f of 0, that's going to be 0 plus 0. That equals 0. So at f of 0, I've got that value. And then we have 1. So f of 1 equals... 2 times 1 plus 4 times 1. So that value is equal to 6. So if I go to 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here's my, it's a squared, so we know it looks something like this, right? So we've got this continuous function here. So here's my function. We have an endpoint of uh, 1 and 6, we have an endpoint of 0 and 0. So what I did is I found my endpoints. Okay, and then it asks S of A, so remember Y, X. So if we, if we change it into the terminology they're talking about, this is axis A, and this is axis F of A. All right, so they want to know if I go up to three, f of f of oops, sorry, let me do that in a different color. So I'm right here now, guys. I found my endpoints using the interval between. I'm right here going okay. What about that output s of a equals three? Well, this should be s of a. Sorry, if I go up to s of a equals 3 and I draw my line over here it's asking why or why not will there be some value of a between 0 and 1 so remember if I if, if s of a gives me 3 then I have a value of a right there so why or why not so you got to decide does it have a value of a yeah, it has a value of A because the output of 3, S of A equals 3, is between, that's a 6, is between 0 and 6. So we say by the intermediate value theorem, there exists a value. zero is less than s of a which is less than f of one so what are we saying that one 
is less than three, which is less than six. One is less than three, which is less than six, which the intermediate value theorem says, if I have an output in between my inputs, that means I have, sorry, if I have an output in between my endpoints, therefore I have an input in between my endpoints, okay? So that's what we're talking about here. All right, guys, so that's that one there. That's the intermediate value theorem. We're gonna do some more of those because they love to ask this type of question on you guys. All right, so let's look at a counter example. If F is continuous on the interval from one to four with F of one equal to three and F of four equal to nine, let's just draw this out as we go. So I'm gonna take my values, X, Y, or I should say f of x, and I have a value of f of 1 is 3, and f of 4 is 9, close enough, all right, then there is at least one value on 1 to 4, so let me draw my, let me do a different color, let's do green, let's just say, that's what my function looks like right here. Sorry guys, my left hand got in the way. Okay. At least one value on one to four for which f of c equals seven. So, another way to write this is this the same as c, and this is the same as f of c. So they're saying f of c equals seven. One, two, seven. Morning, Mr. Loya. Oh, sorry, you're teaching. I'm teaching. Oh, I hi, say hi to everybody, Mr. Loya. Hi, Mr. Loya. If What's up? That door, be careful, because I'm going to be on the other side painting. Oh, so don't walk out and slam it really yeah. hard? It might hit you in the face? All right, no problem. All right, buddy. Uh, sorry. No problem. Uh, so then uh, we have f of, seven, uh, f of c equals 7. So f of c equals 7. So... It's in there somewhere, right? So right now it's a true statement the way they set it up. And then it says, is the following true? If F is defined on the interval one to four, F is defined, meaning there's a, there is a function there, with F of one, three, uh, F, uh, F of one equal to three and F of four equal to nine, which is what we plugged in right here, and no value of C exists on the interval from one to four for which f of c, is, uh, c equals seven, then it is discontinuous. So they're asking us if this statement is true, is it discontinuous? So let's look at this. So right now the top one says I have a value of c. The bottom one says and no value of c exists. So what does that mean? That means x cannot equal c. If x cannot equal c, what happens at that exact point? It's an open circle because it says there is no value of c at f of c equals 7. So if x cannot equal c right there, it has a break in it, then it's definitely discontinuous. So we're going to start working with a lot of just kind of thinking and drawing things out and that's the key piece is start drawing these out as a graph we'll talk about this a lot more we'll see you guys soon